so much for doing this. Um, I think you've got your Pepe next to you. You say he normally jumps on your lap. Yes. He's actually <laughs> he, asleep at my feet at the moment. He's asleep, yes, exactly. I've got a little rough asleep in, in the lounge. It, it's that sort of time in the evening. But um, but no, I it's what, what I'd love Ernest to hear is is your journey with with Pepe and George. Um where you when you got them your decision for for turning them plant-based I remember when I asked you if I could talk to you you said to me well there's nothing exceptional there hasn't been huge changes in 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 converting them but I think everybody's journey is unique mm -hmm. um and and I'd love love for other owners just just to to hear your journey so um so yes if you let me know about Pepe and George well um Pepe is three and a half and I had him from a little puppy, from a, from a breeder, um, before uh, I understood the difference about breeders and rescuing and all this kind of thing. So I decided I would like to have, have a dog and, and I got him from a good breeder and he's very healthy and very fit and certainly the plant-based diet has enhanced his health and his fitness as far as I can tell because apart from a recent episode about which you know, um, he's been very, very well his whole life, you know. Lovely. And, and, when, and when did you to, uh, convert him to plant-based? Was it almost he, immediate? Uh, it was, um, not, all, not entirely immediately. Um, I was a new dog owner, um, having grown up with, with dogs and cats at home as a child, um, but then lived um, my adult life for a long time without a dog. I decided I wanted one, ended up getting two, but, um, and so you know how it is, you look on the internet, you take advice, everyone uh, mm -hmm. gives you advice for which you're grateful, but it's often conflicting or not straightforward. So I actually um, put him on raw to start with. Um, ah, interesting. Uh, once he was out of his puppy stage and I could do that. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, that, he seemed quite well on that. But, but then um, I experienced an ethical change in my own way of eating. And it was very much um, around uh, how we can, if we're not careful, see animals as commodities. And I had this kind of experience through my love of Pepe initially of seeing animals in a new way and thinking, um, how can I eat them and, have a, and be happy about that? Uh, and therefore, if I'm not going to eat them, do I even want them in my fridge or, you know, um, and so I decided that I'd explore whether whether the dogs uh, could be plant based. And of course, I found your website, which was incredibly helpful and did lots of research um, and realized, indeed, they can and thrive on it, too. So mm -hmm. I then changed and um, I can't quite remember. It was before um, companies like Hound were around, um, but um, uh, I think I used Ami and Benevo to start with, who are quite long-standing companies, aren't they? Yes, exactly, yeah. Well, actually, all these new companies only started last year. They, they're very, very new, very recent. 2021 saw, saw the boom. In, in, and, and I mean, the wonderful thing with you, Terry, is, is the fact that you do your research. I know you've sent me quite a few emails which have been so helpful um, saying you've just noticed there's this new company or this new brand has brought out a food what do I think of it mm. which uh, which I love because it then takes me in a different avenue um, and and from your experience I'm sure you've noticed the boom last year which has just been fantastic yes. um, in having the variety is, is, a, is a great thing um, I, I tend to like to mix mix up what I give the dogs and so they get a great variety now yes. um, and uh, I, I think that's one of the reasons they enjoy it so much you know? absolutely yeah and and when when you did transition Pepe from from raw to to plant-based was was it easy for him did he like the food initially I know it was Benevo and Amy but did he take to it he, he did um Good. and I'm afraid <laughs> I I didn't follow all the advice rather like for myself I I went 
uh, plant-based overnight. Yes, so, you, I confess I did too with my right. little dog. <clears throat> I did exactly the same. I, did, I didn't follow my own advice because yeah. I didn't have advice then. <laughs> <laughs> well, the penny, penny dropped and I, I thought I can't live any other way anymore. Um, and, and I did the same with the dogs, I'm afraid. Um, so when George arrived as a rescue aged six months from Greece, uh, from day one, I gave him plant-based, even though he had not had it before. Um, and, and, and eventually with Pepe, rather than wean him onto it, I'm afraid uh, I probably went against the best advice and I understand why that would be good advice and just started him on it immediately. But he was still quite young and pretty robust. He's a cockapoo and I think they are, you mm. know, I know they can be fussy about their food, but- um, They can, exactly. Yeah. But he was okay, he was okay. And they good. both have been, yeah. Good. I mean, we, we do give that advice and, and obviously I, I always give it to, to new owners who, who are transitioning is to do it slowly because it gets the gut bacteria used to, to to build up the the um with that increased fiber but at the end of the day dogs really are scavengers and their stomachs can cope with anything that's that's given to them um so we do have certain breeds that are far more sensitive with everything with their behavior with their skin and with their digestive tract and those need to be dealt with gently but if your dog doesn't fall into that category they, they actually can do fine with just going from one day to the next. Yeah. Stomachs like ostriches, one owner said to me, her, her Labrador has, <laughs> she said he can eat anything yeah. <laughs> and he's absolutely fine. So, yeah. so no, it, was, it would have been the, the right choice. And I bet it made you feel so much happier not having, having meat in, in, and raw meat in particular. Yes, it in, became... In terms of my own conscience and my own ethics, it became impossible yes. to feed him raw. Mm -hmm. I'd never been keen on, on buying the, the, the so-called tinned meat dog food um, mm -hmm. anyway. So, uh, nor was I especially keen on just feeding him kibble. So that's where I'd gone down the raw route. But then I had this ethical decision I'd made about not wanting to eat animals myself or if I didn't need to nor the dogs and uh and I discovered this whole new amazing interesting fascinating mm. healthy world of mm. plant-based dog feeding and it's growing all the time isn't it it's so exciting oh, it, oh it's just wonderful because it isn't just a, a, as you say a community of people but it's actually the loveliest people <laughs> It really is. We all have our dog's interests at heart. Yes. And, um, and they're the most important out of all of this. But equally, we have a social conscience and, and we want to do what's right, not just for our pets, but, but for the planet. So, so we're all very like minded. And I think that's what's opened my eyes and, and gives me such pleasure. Because I mean, we, we've both been taken out of our, our comfort zones, even doing this, Terry. I mean, you're a priest, I'm a vet. Yeah. Your your comfort zone is is on the pulpit in front of people. My comfort zone is in the four walls of a consulting room with an animal between me and and the owner. I'm an extremely introverted person. I I would never have dreamt that I'd be doing anything like this. But actually, it's it's the strength of the people I've come across, people like you, that that are so passionate about what we're doing that it actually makes it so much easier to to do these sort of things to just talk about it because it is so so important for our future but equally for, for the health of our animals <laughs>